Sarvadaman Patel from Anand Gujarat and I started my farming in, way back in 1975. I graduated from uh, UP Agriculture University, Pantnagar Nanidal, which is now known as Govindwala Pant University. Then I proceeded to do my master's in agronomy in University of Wisconsin. But my urge was to go into farming. So I worked for 18 months in America. I, my sister was there, so I received a green card in two months. But there was always something that I wanted to go back and do my, my own self. I had offered a very good job in America. I had done well for the American farmer. And he said, why didn't you stay? I'll give partnership. I thought in my mind, if I can do for him, why can't I do for him myself? And that made me come back to India. Um, I won't say it was love of the land, but it was something that my inner was telling me, let's go back and do something at home. So we, did, we didn't have much land. Um, for two years I went to Rajasthan, lost heavily my father's money. And then my father, a UN official, working in West Africa, he retired and came back and he said, this is not the place for a master's in Wisconsin to do a in, in Lee's land, so he bought this 32 acres of land for me. That was a new beginning in 1977. Gujarat by itself is very prosperous and a hard-working art district which was Khera and now it is Anand. is very progressive and uh, a lot of farmers have innovative ideas, they come out with a lot of things. They are also called the Sadars of Punjab. So the beginning was good. People knew us, knew my father, my grandfather, and so it became very easy in the Agrican University, in the Veterinary College, or any other place. So, the very first year, we made some good money, about 70,000 rupees from agriculture. And slowly, it progressed. In course of three, four years, I became a tree planter. I planted trees from 1982 to we into 2006, about 8 lakh trees around Gujarat, or mainly for the Gujarat Electricity Board and many other small, um, not only small farmers, but also large farmers and corporates. Now, one of my major work initially with planting of trees was to work in saline soils, alkaline soils, sewage water, and also fly ash uh, of the Gujarat Electricity Boards. Then. I increased this 32 acres into another 8 acres in course of time as I earned my money. But my interest was also dairy because my minor subject in Wisconsin was dairy farming, dairy science. So I started with about 20 animals and as of today I have got about 85 animals. We produce about 300 to 350 liters of milk and we give home delivery to about 85 customers from door to door for the last 25 years. Now I feel the kind of organic milk and what I'm producing at the moment, uh, I'll go back saying that from 77 till 2000, I did chemical farming or conventional farming. And the last five years, let's say from 95 to 2000, I've, I was finding a lot of uh, the yields going down, higher rates of uh, fertilizer, urea and sulfates and DAP and moet or potash, um, higher doses of pesticides. And uh, two, two incidents which made me think deeply into myself, okay, why I should, ch why not I should change to something better than what I was doing. And I felt the organic was the alternative to go about it. So in 2000 it changed to organic, uh, on my own, by reading books and things like that. And luckily in 2001, uh, I was able to meet Peter Proctor who came from New Zealand to teach biodynamic farming in Kodai Canal. And that was a new beginning I, I feel in my life. My masters, I, I, I was a bookworm, just following the books. Today, I follow, I, I see the plant, I see the soil, I see the health of the animals that I, I have. The animal is a good indicator of the soil. How good is your soil? If they are healthy, your soil is healthy. If they are not getting pregnant, they are having trouble with other reasons, then it's the soil which is harming them. So. Today, by looking at the soil, looking at the fodder, I can say my cows will be good. 
and looking at the cows, the coat, have they shiny coat, how the meals, do they go have 10 months of lactation, those are the factors that I see. So organic and biodynamic has helped me tremendously. I was a little agitated man, aggressive man, I have become calmer, cooler and in that sense I am with peace with the, myself and also peace with people around me. So that's a great thing. Uh, I think I had, I had a slight blood pressure about maybe 10-12 years ago. Today my doctor says I'm very normal. I'm Good. maybe running 120 to 80. So this is what organic has also done for me. Now I feel that a lot of people say about the economics of, of organic and at one time I was producing about 500 kilos of vegetable every day and sending to three shops in Baroda and subsequently I thought why should I just send to a world I went to open a small outlet at my own farm so I had a small outlet for about eight years and people from all over Anand nearby 25 20 came and brought my uh, took my vegetables brought my vegetables and they were so uh, they were so impressed with it so that was one good winning and the returns from vegetables I felt if you did it well it was almost in a short season you could make from an acre maybe about 25 30,000 and you have three seasons like we have in Gujarat this part of the area you could make almost at 60 70,000 from vegetables but it was if it would be only possible I, I feel now that by doing organic or biodynamic this has made it uh, uh, possible plus the, the milk I sell to my customers, 85 customers in Vidyanagar, uh, I get a fairly good price. Amul is buying my milk for about 26 rupees per liter. And whereas I'm selling at 46, I minus the transportation cost and other co cost is 5 rupees. So I get a 41. From 26, I'm getting 41 added value of just delivering to the customer himself. So that's a substantial profit. I have based my profit on my cows is what is the profit level I get per cow. So in a season I make about 25 to 30,000 per cow and in one one acre I can hold about three cows very comfortably. So that's that would be my economics of my cow. So I find that raising cow, the animal kingdom and the plant kingdom are coming together and helping the soil and helping the animals and I'm giving one of the best class of milk where the customers are very happy. Some of the my most of my customers, 80 percent, about 25 to 30 years old. So that's the credit that goes to the kind of milk we give to them. All are desi or you have crossbred uh, as well? We have um, just about six or eight uh, ghee animals, but we are still struggling with the ghee animals. The production, the maximum production we reach is 2,400 liters, whereas the average of our crossbreds which have been also a, a cross between Saival and Jersey and, Jer and Rati and Sa Jersey, some of the Holstein and, and Saival, Red Sindhi, and they are yielding about 3,300 3, liters. So uh, we are finding to difficult with the give, even if we raise the price or we have raised the price at 4 rupees more, 50 rupees, but even that is not good. being very economically uh, That's feasible. Good. And, uh, completely on fodder based or you have concentrates as well we we mo we produce most of the fodder at the farm in fact all the green fodder is the farm some dry we have to buy from outside we try to locate people who have uh, land where they don't have fertilizer or anything they don't have the way little of pesticide at all so we choose that and buy that we uh, large quantity is basically ours uh, green fodder is 100 percent ours and the concentrate, we try to uh, uh, have wheat, barley, bajwa, uh, oats to feed our cows but, and maize. We do run short, then we try to find out from Madhya Pradesh where uh, very u less use of uh, fertilizer and no use of pesticide. So we try to get wheat, not wheat, but maize from there and that's how we feed. Amul, we are, we are getting out of it. Only in the case of emergency, we when we don't have anything and we have to feed for some time, uh, one of the reasons, uh, major reasons is they are using BT cotton 
maybe just five percent in the concentrate, but that is uh, something so. of concern to all of us. Right. So, um, good. <laughs> And, uh, and regarding the crop economics, ah. uh, uh, I just said vegetables. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, how do you compare the productivities? Because you were in chemicals as well. Uh, you did it chem with chemicals earlier, and now if you compare that, uh, what do you say about the productivity? The how do you see productivity of a plot? Yes. The, uh, I have progressed in these last twelve years so so well, and. Um, there are a lot of organic books, but a person into vegetables or any crop has to really determine his own soil and how it responds to good production of his vegetables. Or, so after struggling for two, three years, I really have uh, kind of mastered my what kind of uh, inputs I need. Not only the compost that I put, I put about 8 to 12 tons per acre on a regular basis for my vegetables. Some, every year? Uh, every year and sometimes every season depending on if it's a high feeder or medium feeder or low feeder. Low feeder would be the leguminous crops uh, or maybe palak and green crops but heavy feeders maybe like potatoes and uh, papayas or bananas all that. So they need really to because there's a continuous production on that side. It's a production cycle of 15 months or even binjols would need a little higher dose of um, uh, organic matter. So we have to use uh, cakes. This would involve neem cake and cavendish cake. These are very safe and we also use rock phosphate to the soil on the compost. We also use bone meal in, in place of rock phosphate and a lot of seaweed sprays at least two times in a season of sea and also sometimes giving a basal dose to papayas and bananas to get the sweetness of them. So this is, but a major, major interest is on biodynamic applications. Uh, there are these three major applications of hope which we use uh, regularly. Every month we do have BD500, BD501 and CPC sprays about two to sprays to each crop in the season. Uh, that is uh, the, for the fungal attack we, have, we regularly use uh, BD508 which is casuarina preparation and which is really prevents good but you have to use it before you have an attack. So we for last six years this would include uh, uh, any space of neem cake or leaf paste the whole thing is that the soil you have we have built up in course of the last 12 years and we believe the, the strength of the soil will give the nutrition to the plant we feed the soil rather than feed the plant that's the major thrust on the organic so that's why we have an attack of insects and pests or disease ranging from just about 2 to 5 percent in crops and sometimes almost negligible. What is your learning with the uh, biodynamic calendar? We follow the biodynamic calendar to, to really about almost 89-90 percent and over and uh, it's amazing when you do it with the constellation where the where the moon is traveling to the constellation, we do it according on a leaf day, or on a root day, or flower day, and a fruit day. Is the results are tremendous? You can almost see it in 48 hours. The changes in the structure and the standing of the crop. So it's just amazing, and especially when they're young, when they're just about maybe a week or 15 days, or even after transplanting, is amazing. And most of the planting is done on a descending period uh, of the moon. And most of the sowing is done in the ascending period and we follow for the harvesting totally the calendar. We see uh, the potato harvesting on a root day, on a descending period, our damage, whether we put in the cold storage, is about, uh, initially we were getting 5% damage, today we are just getting 1% damage. Those are the things which biodynamics has really helped us.